Hello, and welcome back to what we're calling the Kate and Jerry show. I have Kate Marklin here. Good morning, Kate. Or good afternoon, it, Jerry. Good afternoon to you. Yeah. <laughs> so funny, like I've said, I'm on the East, so it's I'm always thinking backwards. But as soon as that came out, I was like, uh oh, so good yeah. afternoon. Oh, yeah. it's lovely to see you again, Jerry. Great to see you. And I, I'm really, really excited. Um, as I mentioned to you before, I went back and listened to at least the first episode completely through, which I barely do with any of my other stuff. I'm going to own that. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it and really sunk into the conversation that we had. And um, I, I really like uh, how we presented all that. So it'd be great to continue the conversation today. And we just spoke about a little bit about what we've shared in the last couple of episodes. And I think this is important. And I'm not sure I understood this. And I think I played this out a lot in the first one is this idea of, right, we have to understand what everybody's doing and what they're doing to be successful so that then we can go on and differentiate and use our creativity and our put our personalization on that. Would you agree with all that? I would. And straight away, you made me think of something that the Danes would rather I didn't bring up, I'm sure, if there are any Danish listeners. So in Copenhagen, there's a bridge called the Kissing Bridge, and they started to build it from each side of the shore and it didn't meet in the middle. <laughs> so when you're starting talking about you need to know what everybody's doing, well, the person on the left bank needed to know what the person on the right bank was doing. The structural engineers clearly hadn't got their measuring right. And some point in the whole process, they also ran out of funding. I can't recall how long it actually took to complete, but it is now completed and I have walked across it and it is a very lovely thing. But wouldn't it have been even lovelier if there hadn't been that embarrassment, if the clarity on not just the vision, but making sure that the maths and the metrics were all in place and the funding were all in place would have made the whole thing a lot, lot smoother. And it's exactly the same with your practice. You can have a vision of something absolutely spectacular, like I think we touched on before, the Sydney Opera House, something magnificent, the Taj Mahal, if you want to build it. But then you've got to work back to get the foundations right. You've got to make sure that your left bank and your right bank are going to meet in the middle. You've got to make sure that you've done the money maths, that you're not going to run out of cash partway through. And that's something that I see many practitioners and, and practice owners just wanting to steer clear of and avoid. Um, and then sort of scrape together something. Now, you do need to have a vision and a sort of relentless drive to bring your idea to fruition. But it's a lot, lot easier if you make sure you've got those those foundations in your business in place. Um, and you gave me a bit of a lesson last time on termites. I think of termites as being an Australian thing in the way they build their mound and then some rain might come and it gets destroyed and they've got to build it again. But you were describing how um, they're a, a real issue for coming back to this sort of architectural model of having to have your foundations in place um and, and and if they're not you can have a problem yeah i went to purchase a home right and where i was in california all of california requires a termite inspection well what do termites do my friends they chip away and eat away at the foundation right they're not up they're not in the ceiling they're not in the walls they're in the foundation they're in the dirt and there was a termite issue, but fortunately, right, because the foundation was done well, it was just an extermination issue because I have mm. run into, and I know people who then run into a foundation repair problem. So mm. again, is the foundation, right? I loved your analogy last time where you started with the architect and talked about the Sydney Opera House. And then I was thinking of, cool, a house on a flat, right? On a plane. Mm. And then I was thinking about a home on a side of a hill, right? All these foundations require the math, the finances, the skills to be put in place so that they will maintain and continue to serve whatever the heck it is you are building upon it. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, I think even in our example, yes, the foundation and the work, the map, the physics, the the geometry, the all of it have to engineering all have to come into place. Yet, 
it's not much different for a hillside home versus a house on a flat plain because the math is still the same, right? All those things are the same. And I know it may sound like we're beating a dead horse here, but this is the main reason Kate and I got together because we started to talk about the common problems, the common issues we see and hear every day with people contacting us saying, I need your help. Mm. Now, in all likelihood, the... um the listener, the practitioner, the practice owner, the healthpreneur, the practice practitionerpreneur, whatever you want to call yourself, you have a vision of a problem that you want to see solve. You've spotted a problem in your life, your community's life, your family's life, whatever your town's life that you want to be able to solve. And you might have really quite an innovative idea about how you would like to solve that but you can't escape the need for having the basics in place, first of all. And there's another lovely example I want to share, which is of a library in Helsinki, and it's stunning. So it's stunning just to look at from the outside. I think it was was, uh, opened in 2000 as a millennial thing, but it has in it music recording studios, 3D printers, sewing machines, you know meeting rooms library rooms but every facility you could possibly think of and this is in a free public library to serve the needs of the Helsinki population so when it was being built there was a very clear purpose of the needs of the population of Helsinki that this building was to be was to meet and you probably have a very clear idea of the needs of those that you wish to serve And it's then that you can get creative. So once you've defined what's the problem you're solving, what's the needs that you both, you need and your community need, you can then get really creative and innovative and create something beautiful to meet those needs. But without clarity on what the purpose is of your building, what the needs are that it needs to meet for both you and those you wish to serve, you're just going to end up with blancmange. And then, of course, like I mentioned, like the bridge, you've got to get your maths and your physics right. Um, I love the and- bridge story. That, that is, that, that is, I think that's a great analogy well, and, well. and the termites, by the way. <laughs> so, yes, we, we want, we, we, if, if you have the boring stuff in place, you have the opportunity to really show your personal flair, your personal inspiration, your personal innovation. And right now, healthcare really needs that. So I think what we're wanting to do is be able to give you the the permission or the ability to show that flair, show that inspiration, not just create more and more of the same, because you're going to have ideas that we've not thought of, that lots of people haven't thought of, that are unique to you. And you're going to have spotted problems that you can solve uniquely to you. So you don't need to be creating it another cookie cutter However, to have the opportunity to build something that's stable and innovative, it's still got to have the bricks and mortar in place. You've still got to have those foundations dug and those to be stable. So they're earthquake proof and okay, termites might come along, but it's an extermination problem, not a demolition issue. (laughs) Exactly. I want to give a real life example of this uh, as you're speaking about this and especially the bridge. I think the bridge is what got me thinking a little harder and deeper. I had a call recently with someone and by definition, they have a successful practice. They're over a million dollars. They have multiple employees. They have one or two sites. And because the base... uh, and I'm going to say this out loud, over $1 million a year in revenue, and they do not have the basics in place. So just Mm -hmm. hear me out on this. They don't. And how I could tell is, well, hold on. The conversation started with, I've had enough. I'm tired of building, building, building. I'm frustrated. That right there, by the way, that terminology told me that they don't Uh, literally, I just went to a place of, okay, I got to back this way up because we're going to be talking about business basics here. And if you are an owner, a practice, I'm just going to say practice owner or brand new owner, 
and you're trying to solve a problem and you're spinning around in that problem and you're trying to solve the same problem 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 12 months later, and you're always in it, deep in it, then you don't understand the business basics. And, and that's, what I, that's what I heard on this call. So revenue a million for taking more, taking a significant amount of money out of the business and rightfully so, because it's theirs. So not a revenue problem. Nope. Not a pay payment problem. I'm getting out of what I need financially, but I'm done. I'm finished. I'm burned out. I'm tired. And it's because as the conversation went on and they told me what they needed help with, it was a very in the weeds, right? And if you don't understand the business basics and you don't understand the foundation, then you're always in the weeds trying to solve the problem in front of you. And you don't understand the connectedness, what I like to call of the business, because the, one of the business basics is understanding this ecosystem of the business, right? And so these are things I want people that are listening to us today to hear, to go, well, I have the business basics in place. Well, but you've been chasing cancels. You've been chasing arrivals. You're chasing marketing all the time. You're chasing a paying your bills that those emotions and those constantly in the weeds on these problems. If you can't take a step back and look at your business in a bigger picture and want to figure out how to solve those problems in a different place than they're happening, then you don't have those basics in place. That that's that faulty foundation, right? Someone you got a faulty foundation. You have a crack in the wall. You fill the crack, you paint over it. It cracks again. Okay, maybe this time you tear out more of the wall, you repair more of it, it cracks again, right? Why do you keep going to the problem, the crack in the wall when, right, it's a shifting foundation problem, it's a faulty foundation problem, it's a termite problem now because you have an unstable foundation, you know, so, so until we get that foundation built, you cannot put a structure above the creativity, the personalization until you have a stable foundation built on the math, everything else. And by the way, doubled and triple checked it because as the Danish people told us, you got to double, triple check all the math too, to make sure it's going to come out how you want it to. I think you've highlighted something really important there in that last week you mentioned about uh, the Richter scale and we of, of your business. And we touched on the fact that, you know, if you live in California, then, um, earthquakes are an issue and clearly termites are as well so i'm not sure i'm moving to california it sounds like a high risk place you only got to add in a few poisonous steaks <laughs> and, although the weather would be nice um so there are going to be risks if you build anything in california of termites and of uh, earthquakes but if you build something here in the uk you're probably going to have a risk of damp so there's always going to be something that's going to shake the foundations on your business Richter scale. But I think you've just highlighted one of the greatest risks there with the lady that you just spoke with, is that you as the owner are actually the greatest liability. You're more likely to create more, I don't know, you know this language more than I do, seismic shocks and waves than anybody else in your business. So it's got to make, you've got to be making sure that it's meeting your needs and your needs for as long as you can see, you might not be able to see what your life's going to look like when you're 80, but for as long as you can see, because if you're good with what you're building, then it stands a chance of longevity. If you're good with what you're building, you've got the foundations in place, you're meeting the market's needs in terms of solving a problem for them, you've got a high chance of success. And honestly, it might sound obvious to the listener, most people don't have this in place, Jerry. The majority of people are building a house of cards. Um, I've talked to individual practice owners. I've talked to seasoned practice owners. I've talked to people with multiple sites and some of them start in the same way. Now, maybe they're measuring things more, but the results are still the same. Yeah. And you have to own the fact of what you created, by the way. Step one is own what you created. Did I create something on a stable foundation? Did I create something on a wobbly foundation? Because, right, I, I compared it to walking into a home, right? You want to buy a home, you walk in, it's just all you see, all you see and hear, basically. 
But again, what about the foundation? Who's going to get under the house? Who's going to get on the roof, right? Are those things, right? So we always see the pretty things. We see the paint, we see the furniture, we see the appliances. But really, none of that matters until someone does a walkthrough on the roof, on the foundation. Are there termites? Do they need to be exterminated? Whatever. This is the same thing. You know, it's interesting. This person also shared with me, which is very common. I have a high staff turnover rate. You got to help me hire. Um, everybody quits, you know, nobody's the right fit. There aren't the right people out there. I'm like, we may need to walk this back. It's mm. like the person painting over the cracks, right? And just mm. keep painting and keep filling. And then, and then getting pissed off, you get a maintenance man in to fix the crack. And it comes back and you yell at the maintenance man. I'm like, you're trying to solve the wrong problem here. The problem isn't the maintenance man. The maintenance man did exactly what we've got to get to the source of the problem. And the source mm -hmm. is usually deeper and sits in those basics. You know, the story of the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. I think it's uh, you build a house of straw, you build a house of sticks, or you can build a house of bricks. And the choice is yours. If you're going to build a house, I would rather be the piggy that built it of the bricks. So when the big bad wolf does come along, you've got yeah. more chance of surviving. Yeah. And, you know, p common theme these days in this, um, in this economy is, you know, future proof your business, recession proof your business, inflation proof your business. And I keep going back to it's too late to add stuff, right? Oh, I want to future proof my business. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy more equipment. I'm going to install more software. I'm going to, I'm going to bring in new staff. I'm like, the best way to future proof your business is the foundation are the business basics in place because then yeah. you can be proactive. This is the other thing yeah. I love about this. You can be proactive. The people who don't understand the business basics come to me and they're very reactive. I need to solve this problem here today. And I'm like, Ooh, this started a while back. And by the way, it's not just this person. So do you really want to solve this problem here? Or do you want to prevent it from ever occurring again? The crack in the wall. Yeah, it's funny because I had a conversation last week, Joe, with somebody, and I kind of felt like they were playing Super Mario. And it was just like, go, 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 go. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm wanting to hit the pause button. And yeah. then I remember there's now computer games. I'm too old for computer games, but yeah, I kind right. of remember they're now, now computer games that don't even have a pause button. And that's mm -hmm. what it felt like. There was no pause button. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Exactly right. And, and you're just so caught up in it, you can't back up out of it. And again, that to me, if you're feeling frustrated, if you feel like, right, man, I'm having this conversation with so many people, they don't understand me, or they can't help me. You know, after about the second person you talk to, who can't help you, it may not be their problem. Right? It's time for you to sit down and reflect and have I put the things in place? to actually do something about this problem. And cool. I think, I mean, what we're describing again is maybe a wonderful bungalow is better for you than a 50 story tower block. I don't, it depends on your personal vision. Right. Personal again, needs. it depends on you, right? Yeah. Again, and I'm going to say it, you know, what you started with that it starts in the same place. It's the math, it's the physics, it's the engineering, it's all of that. It has to start there. So did you start there? And getting worksheets and getting policies and procedures and manuals is not the business basics, my friend, mm. right? It's understanding the connectedness of the business. It's understanding your client's journey. It's understanding the experience you want to create. You alluded today, it's understanding the financials at a level that's not a tax return. That's not a CPA document. Mm. So. And it's getting this. It's, I think the, I see so much opportunity at the moment for the small, huge, small huge. business owner. Huge, and huge, huge. we want you to fly and we want you to be able to bring your creativity forwards. We don't want you to be another cookie cutter, another cookie cutter. But I'm just reiterating again, to be able to do that, there are some fundamentals that you do need in place that then enable you to differentiate yourself from everybody else and stop the big bad wolf, the termites, the damp, the storms, the earthquakes from knocking you down. I like that. I just want to echo that, that you can be successful. There's more potential now than there's ever been in my yeah. lifetime here. And the, the biggest potential is on you being you, you creating something 
personalization that's not like all the other corporate structure we talked about. And exactly. everything we just shared with you is the way to get there. Everybody starts with the creativity. You know, I mean, I'm in the public groups, I'm reading all these things and people jump ahead way too many steps. And I call it asking the wrong question, right? You'll get an answer. That's a sad thing. You're going to get an answer, but that wasn't the right question to ask at that point in time. Yeah. And yeah. the journey is going to be, I've, I've worked with people 10, 15 years in who acknowledge this and now want to make the change. Oh my Lord, the time, energy, and money of making that change is ginormous. So the sooner you do this work, the sooner you understand this, the more you can reap the benefits of your work and the payoff without making the mistakes of most of the other people, including myself. Of course we've been there, Jerry. Of course we have. <laughs> of course we have. Cool. And that's why we don't wish it on anybody else. <laughs> yeah. So good. I think, um, again, you, you know, this series, I'm, I'm, I hope it's delivering and I hope it's building on it. And I hope you guys have listened to all the parts and you're going, wait, this sounds like the other ones. And I'm going to go, yeah, probably does. Yet, if we're repeating the same thing over and over, and we both have been in this as we address probably longer than you, we're, we're, we're just speaking from experience, our mistakes, the people we've seen now that we talk to, the, the patterns we see, and we're trying to help you stay out of those patterns and make those mistakes that we, we made ourselves. So, so I hope you're hearing the same things. If you have any questions, any comments, anything, feel free to reach out to Kate or myself and comment below. And we'll be back again with uh, more of this probably in another week. Take care. Thank you, Kate. You're welcome.